Well, good morning, everybody. Yesterday in our video devotions, I said that we we're starting a new series as we walk through the life of a giant of the Christian faith and see what lessons we can learn from this person's life. The giant of the faith that I want to start looking at for the next couple of weeks is the Apostle Peter. Why did I pick the Apostle Peter? Well, uh, Peter was a normal man, a normal everyday worker. He was a fisherman. Some would say he was a blue collar, middle class type of guy. Some would say that he was a nobody from nowhere. And then the Lord Jesus interacts with him. Peter changes his whole trajectory in life because of his interaction with Christ. He starts following him and he walks alongside Jesus for the next three years. What better person to hear from than this man Peter who walked alongside the Lord Jesus for three years in addition I think we can all identify with the Apostle Peter because he has his moments of incredible spiritual victory, but he also has moments where he ha experiences bitter failure. And so just like all of us, we have our moments where we trust in God, have moments of spiritual victory, but also, let's be honest, we fail quite often, don't we? And so maybe by walking through this man's life, you and I can learn something today to apply to our situation, to our life, to strengthen our faith. I'm going to call this series Foundations of Faith from the Big Fisherman. And so we start where uh, Peter meets Jesus. This is recorded in all four of the Gospels. Let me give you the chapter and verse of each one if you'd like to investigate this today. In the Gospel of John, it's chapter 1, verse 35. In Mark, it is chapter 1, verse 14. In Matthew, it's chapter 4, verse 18. And in Luke, it's chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Who are these authors of these, uh, just a side note here, each one of those accounts differs slightly from the others. Now, why does this happen? Well, who are these men that wrote these Gospels? John is the disciple John who walked alongside Jesus, who was there with Jesus' mother at the crucifixion. Mark is a close friend of the Apostle Peter from Peter's later life where he becomes a missionary telling everybody about Jesus. Matthew, scholars are not 100% sure which Matthew this is. It's a common name. And, and then the book of Luke is a physician who became friends with Paul on his missionary journeys. So my, my point here is that all of the Gospels are either first or second-hand accounts. Luke did an incredible amount of research to write his Gospel. He researched and interviewed everybody he could. He was a physician, a highly educated man, and he wanted to get every detail right. He wrote the book of Luke, and he wrote the book of Acts. And so let's, ch let's let check out Luke chapter 5 where Jesus meets Peter. Now, if there's any confusion here, the reason is because Peter, before he came to Jesus, was called Simon. And so here in verse 1 of chapter 5, we pick up the story. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen, who were fish washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, to one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deeper water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. The four Gospels seem to differ a little bit in this account because John is recording that it is very possible that this is not the first interaction that Jesus and Peter had. John records a conversation with, with Peter's brother and Jesus and Peter. And so somehow in this town, Peter seems to have had a couple of interactions with Jesus. He probably is liking what he's hearing. He's probably recognizing that Jesus is a teacher, a rabbi, or even a prophet. And so, because, how do I know that? Because if you look at when Jesus tells Peter, hey, look, I know you've worked hard all night, but just let out over there, and you didn't catch anything, but let out over there, drop your nets, 
and, and I bet you'll catch something. What happens is Peter responds, Master, we've worked hard on that. If, if, if he just met Jesus, why would he call this guy Master? And so I think they've had conversations before this. But the point is this. In this story, uh, Jesus challenges Peter and says, You've worked hard all night. You've come up with nothing. Just let out right over there. Let down your nets and see what happens. What happened was, the nets are filled with so many fish that when Peter and his associates try to pull it in, the nets begin to break. They can't even haul in all the fish that are in the net. This is after hours and hours and hours of working and fishing and catching nothing. Then, at this site, Peter realizes fully who Jesus is. He says, he hits his knees and says, I am not worthy to be in your presence because he's realizing who Jesus is. And at that, Jesus gives him an invitation. He says, Peter, come and follow me. What was Peter's response? Peter left his business, he left everything, and started following Jesus. This is one of Peter's greatest victories. And here's how this applies to us today. You have an invitation, the same invitation, to follow the Lord Jesus. Here's the thing, though. Jesus says to all of us, I'm just pulling up my notes here, but Jesus says to every one of us, come and follow me. And some of us say, okay, I'll go to church. Jesus says, that's not what I said. I said, follow me. Well, I'll try to do good things. And that's not what Jesus said either. He said, follow me. What is the difference? The difference is this. Follow me, just like Peter did, means I will leave everything and follow Jesus. Does that mean you have to leave your home, your, your job, right now at this second and start being a missionary or, or following Jesus to some faraway land? No. What it means is in here, in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, have you surrendered 100% of your life over to Jesus? He gives you the invitation, and what I'm saying today is, have you said, I will follow you with everything I am. I will turn over 100% control of my life to you, Lord Jesus. Here's our challenge for today. Inspired by Peter's first reaction with Christ. Get by yourself alone today. And think about this. Am I willing to turn over everything that I am to God? Do I trust God enough to turn over all control of my life to Him? Or, let's be honest, let's be real. Is my relationship with God, is my relationship with Jesus like a safety net? You see, a lot of us live life this way. I see God, I see Jesus, I hear the invitation... It sounds wonderful. I'll give over some control to them. This is how we're going to work this, Jesus, some people say. I will be in control of my life until I need help. Until my life spirals out of control, at that point I'll bring you in from the bullpen. You know, you stay over there on your cloud, Jesus, and, and I'll be over here managing my own life the way that I want to manage it. And then when I hit a tough time, I'll call you in. That is not what Jesus said to Peter. Jesus said to Peter, follow me. So here's our question for today. Will you turn over 100% of your life, 100% of control to Jesus? Or are you going to live a life where Jesus is just a safety net? Because if living life with Jesus as your safety net, what that means is that you will never experience the full blessing and the full spiritual victory of a life totally surrendered to God. Here is one of Peter's greatest moments. The best choice he ever made and the best choice you can ever make is I will follow you. I will leave everything. I will turn over all control of my life. I surrender all. I give 100% to you. Get alone today, get with the Lord, and, and really be honest. Can you do it? Can you give over all control? Well, take care, and we'll see you tomorrow for part two.